Hey everyone, Jason from Makera here with another CNC tutorial video, and this one we are learning how to select the right bits. Now our bits, sometimes called cutting tools, are a crucial component to the success and manufacturing process whenever working with CNC machines like the Carvera or the Carvera Air. The bits are what perform the cutting action as materials is removed through a subtractive manufacturing process, and we must ensure that we select the right bit based on the material that we want to use and the type of cut we are looking to create. We also must ensure that we select the correct speeds and feeds for our bits, which we look at in another tutorial video. But before we look at all the different types of bits that you might consider, let's cover a few key terms. Bits are typically measured in shaft diameter, cutting diameter, overall length, cutting length, number of flutes depending on the type of bit, and also the cutting angles depending on the type of bit as well. The shaft diameter determines the overall diameter of the shaft which fits into our CNC machines. You must ensure that you select bits which fit within the collet of your CNC, and the Carvera can be equipped with bit collets from 3.175 millimeters through 6.35 millimeters in diameter, or for bits that are 1 8 to 1 quarter inches. Now the cutting diameter measures the diameter of the sharp part of the bit that's actually used to cut material. This will define the minimum pocket or cutting width that the bit can achieve. When we see the length of the bit, this is typically the overall length of the bit, which includes the cutting length and also the length that sits in the machine's collet as well. In general, you always want to work with the shortest possible bit. As the longer a bit extrudes from the spindle collet, there's a greater possibility for flex and breakage. The cutting length is also the usable length that can be used for machining our parts. This is important because a bit that is 40 millimeters in length overall can't necessarily machine material that is 40 millimeters in thickness. You need to understand how much of the bit includes the flutes and cutting surfaces as that will define the workable area. Now some bits also include flutes which are the spiral corkscrew like cutting parts on these types of bits. Flutes work to cut and evacuate material during the machining process and bits with higher flute counts are typically stronger, provide a smoother finish, but also have a smaller cutting area and multi-flute bits create smaller chips which can easily accumulate more heat especially when machining metals. Some bits also include cutting features that have sharp angles and tip diameters as well, and these are all parts of the measurements that should be considered. Larger angles typically make for stronger bits, but smaller angles can typically create smaller cuts and therefore more detailed projects. Now that we've covered some key definitions, let's look at the specific types of bits that you might consider for your CNC project. Spiral O bits get their name based on their shape, and they have a very common type of cutting tool that works with a wide range of materials. This bit typically only has a single flute and comes in a wide range of lengths and diameters to accommodate a range of stock sizes. You can use spiral old bits for softer materials like woods, plastics, or composites, as well as soft metals like brass or aluminum. Because spiral old bits remove chips efficiently, they tend to not accumulate very much heat, which will make them well suited for machining metals without needing external cooling. You can also use them for non-detail cutting operations like facing stock or creating pockets or contour cuts, and even for hole operations as well. These bits are one of the most versatile type of bits and why it's one of our favorites for working with the Carvera and Carvera Air CNC's. The next type of bit is a ball nose bit which has a rounded tip. Ball nose bits typically have two flutes and a smaller cutting length, but they can also be used to create smooth or rounded pockets and engraving. This allows you to machine curved surfaces, pockets, or relief milling operations in a range of materials, including softer materials like woods or plastics, as well as harder metals too. The next type of bit we're looking at is a V-bit or engraving bit which is considered to be a single flute bit and also very versatile bits that can achieve great detail through engravings, reliefs, and small detail pocket milling. The cutting angle and tip diameter will determine the minimum area you can machine, smaller being more precise and larger being better suited for harder materials. You can use V-bits with a wide range of materials, but they perform best on softer materials and when machining smaller amounts of material at a time. Another type of bit is a corn bit, which is a versatile tool that can be used for a lot of different cutting operations. Corn bits have a very distinct geometry along its cutting edge, which has numerous small teeth that resemble the rows of kernels on a cob of corn. Corn bits exhibit high wear resistance, which makes them suitable for cutting and drilling operations on PCBs, fibers, and composites, and other abrasive materials which would typically wear other bits very quickly. Drilling is another common CNC operation, and while you could use a spiral O or corn bit to create holes, 
We could also use a drill bit to do this as well. Unlike the other cutting tools we've discussed, you would need a drill bit that has a cutting diameter of the whole size you are looking to create. And you also have to use drill bits specifically with a drilling operation rather than a whole milling operation. Thread milling bits can then be used to create threads within a hole that has been previously machined or to cut threads around a shaft. To choose a thread milling bit, you need to identify the type of material you're working with as well as the size of the thread that you're looking to create. The size of the threads are dictated by the cutting features on the tip of your thread milling bit. And despite all of these options, there's even more bits that you can consider as well. From flat end mills to bits with up to eight flutes, there's always an optimal tool for the job. Now, more things to consider to find success are the feeds and speed rates that you actually operate your machine at, as well as the stock or the material that you choose. You can learn more about these features in other videos, along with more how-tos and guides on the Makeara YouTube channel and Wiki page. Please also don't forget to subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.